So uh, I'm going to open up one of our models here and go into the lighting and just enable enhance lighting and give myself a shadow. Oh God, look at you. You're so hot, boy. Look at that. Mm, okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to cast this little shadow here and I'm going to talk about one of the submissions, which is this dude. I'm also going to correct the perspective to be similar. So let me see if I'm doing this right. So this is your day one. Uh, for your day one, honestly, and this is just, I'm going to do a little bit of 14 day challenge, steering back the community for the 14 day, with the 14 day challenge rules. Um, you're really not supposed to be, I want to just save this. Uh, dude, save. Um, uh, I already saved. Yes. Um, so this little guy here, my computer is just humming a little bit. This is not what you're supposed to be doing for 14 day challenge. You're not supposed to be doing a, um, old man with top down lighting. This is, this is not day one. Don't do this. This is a study. All right, this isn't a 14 day challenge because you're not writing, following the rules. A 14 day challenge is a challenge that uh, helps you develop a face you can call on for design purposes. It's not a challenge that helps you paint one particular age group really, really well because likely you're not going to get hired only for drawing old men from top down view. All right, 14 day challenge is supposed to be there for developing a face you can call on, a face you can use functional design for functional design purposes so I'm just making a better selection over here all right and then I'm just gonna throw it against the background so just as a study I'm just gonna edit this just as the study that it is background was too dark object was too light telltale signs of first timers with studies all you got to do is this and you can make the background just a little bit lighter if you'd like. It's still going to make sense. Just a little bit lighter. Here, this, this is not right. This is pure trash. Never use this value on a background ever because it throws off all your values. This is no language relationship between your background and your object because you've thrown off the light environment. If you ever were floating in a sea of white, everything would be really, really drowned out. There wouldn't be any shadows. But you do have shadows on this fella here, so you probably need something a little bit lighter to show that the light environment is caused by a light that's really strong, strong enough to cast these shadows, but at the same time, it's not pure white. It still has weakness because there are shadows. Um, so right here is the first adjustment. Bringing down the values of the object was the second adjustment. These it has messy outlines over here, which I can't really fix um, perfectly, but I can just try. No, I can't. I can't try. Um, another thing would be knowing where to put your highlights. So your highlights, I've created a duplicate here with our sexy ogre guy um, off Portrait Studio. And I'm just going to be showing you where you're supposed to be placing a lot of these values. So I just dropped hold the background value and I'm just using it in a very rough brush stroke. Just using my uh, dry oil brush number two for anyone curious. Again, I'm just throwing little blocks of light wherever we have the light focusing. So you used too much light on the object. You threw in a back background value that was too dark. Nothing was talking to each other. There was no dis there was no conversation in the image between any any units of the light environment. Everything came from a different thing. If the background really was that dark, you would never have had light value on the object bright enough to reveal it that much. So yeah, you're supposed to, lesson number one, incorporate the background in the values you choose. The background plays a role, it has a role to play. I'm blending away at the nose just a little bit. I'm going to blend some of these brush strokes away or some parts of the brush strokes, leaving behind some, just to match your painterly method over here. You do need some soft brush to build up some radial values. See this cast shadow? Every single value, let me bring this in. Every single value on this dude in the dark region, let me let me pull them beside each other. This is the lightest value in the dark region, right? C 
compare that value to the darkest value in the, um, well, actually this one might be okay, but for the, to the darkest value in the light region. This is the lightest over here, and this is the darkest. Now just compare it to the midtone. But if I do this with you, God help me, this value is way too close to this value. Way too close. This light one right here. And this value over here, one of your midtones, let's say. Let's just say the darkest value. Way too close. This was a little bit lighter. This value comes from a region above the core shadow line. And this comes from a region below the core shadow line. And they're the exact same value. That's a problem. They should be different. The darkest of this should be nowhere near the lightest of this. So we're going to darken this entire region with one simple darkened layer. And that's how you create neighborhoods. That's how it looks like his eyes are actually casting a shadow down. You create this beautiful relationship between light neighborhoods and dark neighborhoods and that they don't share values ever. And I'm just casting this shadow here. Your darkest dark should not be that dark, so I'm just going to use my soft brush and just get rid of this outline. Just let it stay painterly. Gonna get rid of the extra dark you have around the mouth. Too much dark, unless he has lipstick only at the upper lip. See how the values are really similar to each other? And I'm gonna let some of the uh, darks around the eyes work just a little bit, just for the cavity. So the eye of the, the space in the eye as a whole. Okay. So now what we have is a little bit more of a normalized, like a normal language now between background, light source, and object. I had to adjust nothing other than your values. Doesn't that make you angry? Doesn't that kind of piss you off that it was just a value problem? Your values and your symmetry and your placement, sorry, not values, but your blending and your symmetry and your placement were all intact except for this stupid little thing that is just standing in the way of you improving. A stupid little rule that you could have just crossed off your list written on your, you know, on a paper in your desktop and have it have yourself look at it every time. Doesn't that make you mad? Doesn't that just grind your gears? It pisses me off. Um, whenever I feel, okay, this whole time I've been trying to fiddle around with the detail and this whole time it was just me lightening or darkening the background just a little bit. That does piss me off all the way. Okay, so please remember that the relationship between light neighborhoods, the lightest value here should still be darker than the darkest value here. They should not be the same value. Sometimes if things are, you know, uh, balanced and calibrated in such a way, the lightest of here is the darkest of here. But honestly, this is just too dark to be used up here. Look. This is your lightest value now, now after I edit it. It's nowhere near appropriate to use in the light region. That's how it should be. That's a healthy value range to work with. Now I'm just going to add a big beard shadow. Yes, it's called a beard shadow because it's just always on the lower half of the face like a beard. And I'm just going to be darkening. Doot, doot, doot just showing how the face rotates away. And sometimes we have little hiccups where we have some light. See how his upper, uh, kind of looks like Hellboy, uh, the light up here. So normal. So I'll take some questions now regarding this study alone. Please don't ask me what, you know, it's something completely unrelated. I'll take a general Q&A at the end. Also, because you see these little, these are little like uh, changes in the value, um, in the altitude of the objects. They're going to be like little hiccups of light on the beard shadow, but they're very, very slight. Still, this that value is way too dark to be used up here. Look at that. But to the naked eye, this looks really similar to this. They look like the same value. You as the artist have to be responsible enough to know the difference. Um, just over here, I might even make this whole section just light, just because it looks up. And then the nose should be tilted down. To ask the question, just write um, uh, at Istabrak so I can find it. So because we're looking down, 
He's looking down. We're looking down at him. His nose is going to be in the way of his nostrils. If he's supposed to be Asian, maybe you can just shrink the nose just a little bit more. Um, but definitely his nose is supposed to be. Another way to do this is without touching the nose, just raise the nostrils up. It won't change his features too much. And then because he's old, yes, you can use these values. Uh, you can use these edges. They're really sharp laugh lines. He's old. Um, so you can have an actual wrinkle, but not so dark. All right, so let's compare. That's all it was. So this is how good you are, but your values were so newbie. <laughs> you looked like you started drawing yesterday. And you, that probably pisses you off. You're probably really good with your traditional. You're like, okay, I really have a long learning curve to cover in order to get my digital at the same level as my traditional. Um, but the, the, these, these were your values. These were your, sorry, brush strokes. This was your detailing. I really did not, I didn't do much. And it looks so much better. And that's just because we balance the light environment. It's a very serious fundamental. You don't um, skip this fundamental. You don't dick around with it, okay? Uh, so take your time in studying some floating forms in an open space. Choose fiddle, fiddle around with the background. See what you can uh, get. Um, choose a mid-tone color for the object, for the form study in open space. Um, until it looks right to you. You, you. you never have a dark room and a light object unless you're Dr. Manhattan and you're glowing from the inside out because of radiation poisoning. Um, uh, you know what grinds my gears? Simple art mistakes. <laughs> Shouldn't the mouth, middle, line, edge, and the corners be darker than the shadow upper uh, lips? No, not necessarily. We're already in such a dark value. Um, and it's not necessary that they become black, that they become dark spots. Remember that the lips are a tricky dark spot because it can be the whole line of the lip or it can be just the two outsides if the lip is slightly open. Um, looks like you're turning on a lamp. <laughs> if he was darker starting off. Um, yeah. And uh, what version is your Photoshop? Uh, CS5. With that brow bone shot, it makes uh, so much sense uh, instantly. Yeah. Um, question Can I do the 14 day challenge for critique? I mostly do traditional, still learning digital. What do you mean for critique? You get critique and you give critique in order to do a 14 day challenge. So, yeah, you can do a 14 day challenge um, for the sake of critiques. But I, I really don't, <laughs> I'm trying my best to meet you halfway. I really don't know what you asked. Um, you want to critique? You can. You can only critique. You, can, you don't have to do the challenge. You can just be there to critique other people. Absolutely. Um, uh, sometimes I am tempted to ask people if I can take pics to draw, uh, but then I don't because I don't want to look weird. I work customer service. I see so many faces every day. I saw a lady with the tiniest nose. I really wanted to sketch her face. You can sneak a little picture. No one's going to know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just flatten this. I hope this showed you. Again, these were your lines. This was your work. God help me with this. How do you, how do you delete them, guys? Somebody help me out here. How do you delete them? I think someone on Skype might have told me. I'll just wait for the answer. No. And then I'm going to look at this, and then I'm going to look at this guy for the end. So I like to put grayscale studies ahead of, uh, of completed pictures. That way we're already in, you know, so we're stretching our form language muscle language muscles. What is the, what is the, uh, the keystroke? What is it? Somebody, somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. <laughs> okay, let me turn on Skype. Maybe one of my friends told me. Um, view clear guides. Okay, view <laughs> clear guides. So it's, it's not a control H. Thing. Oh, thank you. You guys are the best. All right. So let's get started on this one. So the biggest thing that throws me off is I don't know whether it's a male or a female. That's not good for a 14 day challenge and it's not good for a day nine. 
Um, it, it, you need to have it a male or a female for 14 day challenge. Um, if you, again, don't like this, there's a little X at the top that tells you, uh, that lets you escape a, uh, it lets you exit a window um, in case you don't like the content you're looking at. So right here, day nine, you're, you have nine attempts. And in those nine attempts, you haven't addressed any of the major gender differences in the face. You've given us really strong jawline, uh, large lips, low, flat eyebrows. I have a feeling you were going for female, but honestly, I could be wrong. You might be going for male. Um, but even if it was a male, what role would this male play in any, sh in any game or show or design? It'd be very difficult to understand what he's all about. Um, it could be like a, um, a health robot that is neither male nor fe female, and it just has like a general... I really, that's the only thing I can imagine for this. Like a big robot nurse, and it has a little mask on it, and it would be this face. Um, no emotion, nothing, just something for the person to look at. And it'll be like a funny little nurse with wheels. That's the only design role I see for a character that looks exactly like this. Just a big, really gentle nurse robot. Um, so I, I, I don't know if the artist is here to tell me. I'm going to go ahead and assume it's a female because of the size of the pupils and the kind of lip you drew. It looks very effeminate. And I'm going to move in that direction. Eyes increase their size. They're small for female or male. All right, so I'm just going to increase the size of the eye, starting with one eye and then shifting the other one over. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Okay, and then I might have to shrink them one more time. So definitely a step forward now. And then the bone structure of the forehead is fine, but I would add some kind of uh, eyebrow arc, but that's not necessary. You don't put the eyebrow arc ahead of bone structure. Write that back to me. Put bone structure ahead of eyebrow to determine uh, female or male, to determine gender, uh, because the bone structure is the hormones. That's the biology of it. That's the cells and structure of it. Um, that's the science of it. A male who is very, very built, who has high testosterone, who's lifted all his life, gets a jawline like that. Um, it's not just in the fact that it's sharp and handsome. It's that it's big. Scale is what we're talking about. Um, so, Next thing would be the length of the nose. So, Moving this down. Length of the nose is a little bit long considering where the ears are. And then the lip, you can keep it at this size if you want to. A large lip on a female looks very, very masculine. The smaller the lip, the more elf features, the more um, ogre and elf kind of cat beauty triangle we're pull pulling from. Even though it's not a complete beauty triangle, she's still very beautiful. And then duplicate layer, and I'm just going to adjust the bone structure, which is the biggest thing which is why I'm delaying that, um, taking care of the distances, features, bone structure, all of that. So I'm tucking in the, the size of the cranium should be wider than the jawline. Yours was at. And if this was a male, you weren't doing that right either. You were doing both wrong. Um, male needs smaller pupils in the eyes, needs a heavier brow, thicker hair, um, really strong light on the brow bone, suggesting that the brow bone is so strong it catches light. A lower earlobe, a thicker nose, a larger mouth that is way less plump in Botox. A dermy something shot. Thickness of the neck. Also, you weren't doing any of that right for female or male. So this can be a perfectly beautiful female angel. I don't know. It's kind of the face I would give like a character like, uh, like Zelda. Not too effeminate but just feminine enough that it's a gender, it has a specific gender for the narrative. And then let's compare the before and after. This is just the head size, you guys. All right. By any standards, this was wrong. Also, the weight. The weight was wrong. If it was a chubby person, where's the weight in their... Ch they, they were chubby, but they had cheekbones? That doesn't work. You're day nine. So someone should have said this earlier. 
it's okay if no one did. I like to critique 14 day challengers later in their in their journey just to make sure problems like this are, are not happening. But for you critiquers out there, I'm talking to you, those of you who are active critiquers on the community, please make sure you're looking out for this stuff. Um, uh, gender is gender and we need to start seeing where that you know there's this biological indication of it, male or female. The artists need to practice it. Now I'm thinning the neck out. The jawline edge is right there, right? Right here. It happens after the jawline edge. Not too thin. But I'll adjust that with liquify. I want to start thin and then just adjust thereafter. So if this is if this was a world of genderlessness, I wouldn't have ha given you a male and female mannequin in Portrait Studio. I wouldn't have given you a male and female bust that you can adjust the, 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 the features with. I wouldn't have done any of that. I would have just given you one one model. And how is that helpful to you, those who have to design a female with humongous boobs and is a healer for the next Overwatch character? She's supposed to be super effeminate, super gentle, you know, all that crap. Maybe it's going to be a male nurse. I don't know. <laughs> I'm all for, you know, uh, integration between male and female, like job-wise. I'm not for this whole, there's no such thing as male and female business. That's just like fucking Twilight Zone, Brave New World kind of crap. All right, so now I'm blending away all of these adjustments I made. I think this is a good thickness for the neck. I mean, as, as necks go, I, I, there's all kinds of necks out there, but for the sake of this character. Another thing would be, now it's just topical stuff. I will show you what the eyebrows do, but I won't keep it, just to show you very feminine you keep the insides too low though it'll look like she's angry so you gotta raise the inside of the eyebrow out as well all right you want to be an artist they're gonna hire you to draw a girl and if you give them the before of this you're not gonna get paid all right so that's the before for the eyebrows she does look angry because these insides need to be all the way up also, her lips aren't doing much. So the arc in this case is a little bit higher now. There's just a little bit of light on the inside. So before, after. Um, if you want to keep the eyebrows, keep them. But just to show you how much of a point I want to make with the bone structure, I'm going to keep the eyebrows high because we have girls who just don't have eyebrow arcs or thick eyebrows. Um, I don't have thick eyebrows. My eyebrows tend to be very flat. I don't have an extreme eyebrow arc. Um, and then the more you, inf like a pigment you add, the thicker the eyebrow, the hairier the eyebrow, the more significant of an eyebrow arc there is. Oh, I also sometimes women just are born with really strong bone structure and some are born with a bit more curved bone structure for women. And then I'll show you the complete before and after now. And then I'll paint a little bit. I need to paint around the eyes. They look too clean. And it's okay if your feet, if your painting looks like a, um, you, clear guides. If it looks like an emotionless robot, it's okay. See how small the eyes were? And the largeness of the face made the eyes feel even smaller. Okay. Any questions regarding this paint over? This way I don't get questions for an old paint over at the end of class. So a little bit of darkness down here goes a long way to make the face look more human. We don't just have perfect under eye skin. There's always extra amount of skin. I'm using just a slight little value drop. Nothing to make her look sick or anemic or anything, but just enough that it looks like she has extra skin underneath her eye. Something very normal, not an indication of any illness. And then we have the nose. The nose is a day one nose on now a day 10 face, um, uh, probably day 14 face, now that we've made all these adjustments, minus the nose. The nose has a lot of problems with it. Uh, the nostril is too small for the nostril outline. The nostril hole does not match. That doesn't, it doesn't come, that doesn't work like that. The nostril outline is the nostril hole. It's a weird thing to write back to me, but write, write it back to me. A lot of you have been doing this crap. And then 
the outside is tucked in. The septum is lower. That would be very weird if we had an upturned nose naturally by default. Everyone would have like a little piggy nose. Tear dropped. Septum is nice and low. And then you, you just overdid these. Please don't prioritize the nostril highlight for the, um, uh, for the tip. It's just lots of stuff to adjust, and it's mostly underpainting. It's mostly me just removing some of the paint you had. So I got rid of the white, and I'm now I'm going to get rid of the outline. So then you're going to say, hey, Istabrak, now that you got rid of the outline around the nostril and the highlight on the nostril, what the heck am I left with in order to make this nose look real? Well, it's called an edge, and it's what we do uh, when we don't have any contrast dependency. We use edges. So there's an edge of the nostril on the skin face, on the face of the skin, right here. So the nostril is nice and popped out now. And there's the fact that the nostril itself is just a little bit darker than the tip. Not value sharing, just enough that the nostril feels like it is a shadow, because it isn't. It isn't facing up at the light at all. It is part of the upward facing snout area but it isn't as as high as the tip of the nose and then there's the fact that you didn't blend and your core shadow is shaped your core shadow is forced the core shadow goes straight no matter what kind of it does follow contours but sometimes it just moves straight through just like this the nose is moving away from the light starting here there's a little shadow under the septum now it's looking a little bit more closer to a day nine nose. Again, you critiquers out there, this is why I tell you to write notes. You 14 day challenge critiquers, you're, you're, you guys are in a challenge, you're in an adventure. You're like Frodo right now. This is no joke. You're learning how to paint a face well against all odds. Brain doesn't like to learn stuff that it feels is an unnecessary task. But don't underestimate the brain's ability to adapt though. So I'm just blending away. This nostril edge isn't this sharp out here. It's sharp only up here because it's against the darkness of the nostril cavity. Lots and lots and lots of nose mistakes. I recommend you correct this day, go on to your next day, but not before you do at least three nose studies. Okay, a little bit of bounce light here and here. And this nose is already looking much better. Um, we have a little bit of a tuck here and there. And then finally, we have the darkest part of the nostrils, which is the most important, important part of the nostril, late, late game rendering feature, which is that deepest part, that radial shade that eventually becomes the hole that our fingers occupy. <laughs> um, so burn mid-tones, and I'm just darkening. The deeper we get, the darker we get. That's radial shade. The higher we get, the lighter we get. Okay, so um, men have wider lips, yes. How can you improve the nose? Um, okay, and then is it best to line up the neck with the outer corner of the eyes or? No, 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 don't do any of that, Hamish. Sometimes you have a perfectly cute protagonist who is a scrawny little weasel and he is uh, deliberately drawn against that trope and his eyes are way wider than his neckline. Sometimes you have a scrawny little um, a protagonist and he's gonna be a really he's very handsome um, so his eyes are even wider than the usual um, and that means the neck is remember like a uh, sword in the stone very scrawny little kid his eyes are massive neck is thin and again that's a trope that we're pulling from so don't follow any eye line or whatever you can do that for a general rule but what if you have to design a trope where the person has really thin eyes and small eyes and eyes that are close together, the neckline would still need to be thick. It's not a good, it's not a good tr uh, 
measurement to, to, to have. Okay, so I think that's it for today for this piece. So we have the oh god before no no before before, after, and then the clear guides. Before, after. So now it's a specific gender. The character trope is there. You can call on it next time you gotta design a female. The lips and the nose have, haven't too much distance. The eyes are appropriate size. Other than this, you had wonderful shadows around the head. Look at that 3D forehead over here. I couldn't have done better than this. This is wonderful. Um, the head actually looks like, you know, you can headbutt something. And then um, you need a couple more value climbs up with the skin tone. So I would brush stroke over here, brush stroke over here, here, here along the nose, and here a little dab on the chin. Um, just out here a touch, a little bit over here and here. Um, just a small little amount of values, a little bit over there, maybe some surrounding the forehead. Okay, um, sorry about that, that's my bangles. And then we have a bit more hair extending out. And you're well on your way, if you apply all of these changes, you're well on your way to a 14-day challenge, a successful 14-day challenge. Um, a little bit more is required on the lips. The lips are cylinders. So there would be a shadow here and then light, shadow, sorry, and then light and then shadow. The lips are very underdeveloped. Not under-rendered. Don't confuse that. Underdeveloped. We don't have real core shadows here. Um, so I'm going to merge that down. Let's see if there's any questions. Um, um, yeah, so plump is a very female lip. Anything not plump, it looks male. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at these. Um, so I'm going to start with this one. The point of this is that we have like this um, really strong light source and an object floating in it. The light source has a color, but for some reason a demon snuck in into your ear and said, hey, hey artist, make her of a different color. Even though she is swimming in a light source, make her a completely new color. Why not? I mean, what's stopping you? Fuck that Instagram girl. She doesn't know what she's talking about. That's wrong. Please don't listen to that evil voice. It doesn't know what it's saying. If you put an object floating in a light source and the object, the light source has a color, that object has no power over the light source. So it ends up looking like this. Also, the light drowns out a lot of this contrast. You're inside a light source. So it's, yes, it is a light source. You've treated it as a light source in the painting. Even if there's light coming only from the top or whatever, all of this water is very reflective. It's a good, it's, it's, it's a, it moves light nicely through it. It's not an opaque object. It's very translucent. Then we've got the fact that this is all high detail, which is impossible. You get a a fogginess, a loss of detail, which makes it even more mysterious. I mean, we're not losing the story here. It's just that you're a portrait artist, and God forbid you got to delete the portrait in your illustration. This is not a portrait. This is not a, 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 a close-up of a character. This is not a character design, so stop detailing the character. The room comes first in, a, in an illustration, always. That said, I think your light source itself is just too strong in all the parts. I would make it strong only where, maybe at the base or something, and then really have these explosions of contrast everywhere else. And the light source, a big fluorescent beam, blurs out the sides as well. So we've got blurry edges. And we've got a big layer of light. I like the spooky green that you used. It's also really has a strong narrative. Um, um, it's, a, it's an agent for, for good narrative, like anything, anything creepy or strong narrative agent, I could say. I'm adding that glow 
on the outside. Maybe I'll do it on color dodge. Nope. Nope. Soft light. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Uh, just on normal. Maybe the water is uneven. Maybe the water is bubbling away. So we're getting like a, a slight little, you know, unevenness in the glow on the outside of the fluorescent light. And to make a light look stronger, you got to weaken it. Write that back to me. Very, 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 you know, important little detail here for you to remember. If you want a light to look stronger, you got to weaken it in large amounts. So what I'm going to do is just darken. So write that back to me. Darken. Okay, it's okay. Relax. When we darken, we get a chance to. I'm going to get this layer. Put it back before I darken and erase away only where I want the light to be strongest and even then it's just too strong everywhere. Maybe there's just an outward glow on the outside of the tank. Just out here. But to make a light stronger or look stronger or seem stronger we uh, we weaken it in a painting and then we readjust making and that's not as it says. It isn't self-explanatory at all. That the clause that follows that, write that back to me, rule, is that you got to edit again and make only one section lighter um, or as needed. So if it is a glow coming out of a light source, weaken everything around the glow so the glow seems stronger is basically a more normal way to say it. I'm also going to add the reflection on these. Again, getting stronger the closer it gets to the object. The ground beneath it, really, really big one, is the space on the ground. But we do have a sneaky, sneaky little shadow of the tank. So the tank is casting a shadow of this little base, this little uh, platform that it's on. Oops. It's also not throwing the light everywhere. Maybe there's a cast shadow off the drawers here. And there's another cast shadow coming off this cupboard. That's what, that's, that's what it's called. I don't really know what it's called. And um, cast shadow coming off the on the floor again. And if this is a reflective surface, lots and lots of light is drowning this area over here. Oops, I think I did that wrong. Ugh. Just like so. So we're actually getting glows. And then finally, before before everything else is done, I'm going to uh, filter blur. Gosh, I'm blur. Nope. I'm just going to blur this area here. So it's a cast shadow. They're very, very rough lines that I'm throwing, but the room is actually responding to the light source now, uh, which was a big thing that you didn't have. and the fact that you're trying something like this and you don't have the language to say that this light source, how this light source is bouncing on other objects means that you don't have a good form language altogether. So you need to start doing some form studies. I want to darken the top half of the canvas. It's okay if the light source gets weaker. Again, the weaker we make it in certain aspects, the brighter it gets in other aspects. And I think the perspective on the tank itself is a little bit off, so I'm going to start off with the, the lowest part I want, and then I just thereafter. I think the perspective was a little bit off there. And then I'm just going to blur it. Filter, liquefy. Bit more perfect. 
I'm not sure why you felt it was necessary to show every last detail. It makes me just want to get walk you up to the class and have Tommy give you a couple smacks. <laughs> Um, it, it doesn't work like that. You, the room happened. There's a bunch of water. She's floating in a... You've got three layers of things. You've got the air in the room and the light traveling through it and the color in it and the water and the fact that it's deeper and she's in this plasma. It's not even water. It's um, the liquid fluid or whatever it's called. Um, and, uh, and then she's supposed to be a mysterious little dude, so the characterization and the narrative is saying, please stop, stop showing her off because you've lost all the mystery. You made all the mistakes here. So I don't want it to be a very strong solar type of light source. I'm still going to make it nice and eerie and dim. And you can add a couple of little distortions here so we don't know fully if it's a female. Some of the light is moving through her silhouette. We don't really get to see all that detail. But we can still see it's a beautiful woman, and then the tension is back toward the the um, the uh, room. As for the fact that it's monochromatic, I really think you should adjust that. Um, you can keep the room green, so we have the eeriness, but you can bring in a new color for the hottest part, I guess, of the light source. And that would be just throwing some blue in. Just like that. Maybe use your sliders to find some neighboring colors that might look pretty. You know, it's not just a perfectly consistent, maybe it's a chemical combination of like different solutions that create these really eerie colors floating around. Then we can bring in some of these colors on the floor. Maybe like a pattern of light on the floor. Maybe you have some nearby lamp and it's bringing in all these new yellow values. That would be nice. Um, but altogether, I think this is much more dramatic and m way, way more, way more accurate a story with it. The, not the accuracy. The aim of the story is more intact, I think, with this version. I'm also fixing the uh, perspective. For some reason, they gave us like a top down where really this is just leveled. So you had this like thing going on. Okay. Um, what else would I adjust? You got these two tubes which are perfectly symmetrical to each other. Just get rid of one of them. You don't need two tubes. Like, it's starting to look a little bit like a Salvador Dali painting. Everything's so perfectly not Salvador Dali. Alphonse Mucha, you know, his uh, Art Nouveau stuff. Everything was a little bit too symmetrical. The borders were always symmetrical, and then you'd have a little bit of designs. It's a, it, look, it looks a little bit forced, the symmetry here. Okay, and then I'm just going to mess around with this because I'm really tempted. I think this looks so much better. You still have some of the eerie green, but you don't have this elementary level green. Um, you still have an eerie glow. Um, definitely still a spooky uh, ghost glow, uh, if you can all imagine that outer rims could be glowing just a little bit more in some areas. Um, maybe you can show in the transparency of the floor beneath um, just like this. Just something like that to show a little bit more translucency. You don't have to. It could be a really, really um, like a strong, thick uh, solution which helps. And then we've got the like the main light that travels up you can't do this. This is something you can't do because it's guiding the eyes where? Outside of the canvas. It's also not in the hot spot of the canvas, it's not in the smack dab center of the canvas, so it doesn't deserve to have all that brightness. All right. So, um, good night, Hamish. Thank you for joining. So, before, after. Lots of problems. In the before, you had a weird perspective going on. The character was just floating. Like, she was floating in front of a paper more than flowing, floating in water. If you want her to be more detailed, you can go ahead and bring it, but you can't bring it to a point where it's more bright and more dark than the scene. She can't be brighter or darker than the landscape. Here, she was brighter and darker, or darker. She had pure black used on her hair, and not to mention you used it Tiny little pixel whip brush to do that. I'm gonna beat you up right now. 
Okay, so this is a good plate to work on. I recommend bringing in, look at this, it's going to be so pretty. I recommend bringing in a nice warm lamp. I'm sure there's scientists who need lamps that are, they can't just keep looking at the plasma to provide them with the light source they need to do their research. So we've got color. Imagine a little lamp over here. Actually, let me just move through the layer mode, see what I can get. This is nice. So, let me try again. There we go, that's nice. Um, this is just a placement, just an experimentation of where we have some lamps possibly. Then there's maybe an x-ray screen that's a bit more blue. So this could be where they put up x-rays to take a look at them. Um, this area here could be a little bit more, uh, of a different color and it could be a light source all by itself. So we give it like a purple, give it a glow and then we make it a different color. And now we're bringing in all these new pretty colors. It could be like a very gentle, you know, slight glow and you could put up an x-ray over here. Um, of course, wherever there's a light source glowing outward, we get a uh, little glow around it. And you can just put up some x-rays over here. Um, another thing would be to add more mechanics around here. Maybe there's these little pivots. How does she get flushed out? How, where does the water go? So maybe there's these little pivots holding, or whatever they're called. They're little, little clicky thingies that pivot outward to open up the tank to let her out. Maybe she's got a bunch of tubes inside, kind of like an umbilical cord and then a breathing, a breathing tube. Um, these are all little things that will add detail. So you don't have to feel compelled to bring in detail on the character and you can just bring them outside of the character. Oops. like that. Um, what else could you bring in? More little lamps over here and here. Uh, some carpet, some messed up paper. Maybe it's an abandoned research lab and she's been abandoned so you see a bunch of paper, a guy's hand. I don't know. Uh, anything to keep adding to the narrative because if you as the portrait beginner uh, who's really good at faces, better than he is at everything else or she, um, is only depending on your face to carry an illustration, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it the opposite way. You, you want to go north, you're going south. That's the exact thing you're doing right now. All right. Um, would the tank reflect the lamp in this case, or is it already too strong? It, it, no, it wouldn't. It, it really, if you want to, again, I'm being really, really like uh, cautious with this. If you want to, you can make the tank do something like this, where we have an even stronger glow, just like that. And that would mean none of these are mean anything. Um, this is more dramatic. This is what I would do. Definitely something I would do. You know me with my <laughs> with my highlights. Um, this is definitely something I would do, just to add to the mystery. Uh, but um, it, it's not necessary. It, it, in any whatever you end up doing, this is going to be the light source, and you wouldn't have to worry about this. But because I made it so dim, you asked the question. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't stay that dim. I was being very, very cautious. All right, flatten the image. And then our last one um, coming up. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, so let's see if there's any questions. No? Okay. For this piece, um, another example of how... how portrait artists put the portrait ahead of the landscape first um, and it's not it's not good to do this this is what kind of lighting situation can anyone specify the kind of lighting environment we have over here what kind of lighting is this Okay, 
just waiting for the answer. Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> okay. And then he's climbing out of his little cave. Fallen warrior summoned by a witch or something like that. Backlighting. Excellent. Silhouette. Excellent. Beautiful. Um, so that means that we have this going on. Lightened, everything's set up. And then, da -da -dun, da -da -dun, da -da -dun. We have something like this. We also have the inversion of that, which would mean direct inverse. The whole dude gets darkened. Also with a lot, like a, a green, I'm going to make it a green. Green's very popular today. So darken, just these changes alone have taken this illustration to like a whole new level dramatically. And it makes me cry a little bit when I see that artists are missing all of this in their, in their lives. It makes me cry. Just these changes. That's how we blueprint our thumbnails. This is how, what we do with our thumbnails. Um, and when we're missing stuff like this, it it uh, it throws it throws everything off, and it is a, a it's like what we did with the first paint over today. You knew better. You draw really well, but you're assuming that. All you got to do is make the face look good and make his mu muscles look hot and it's done. It's not. It's not about that. You draw so well that you have this leftover problem that is completely stagnating your progress. Uh, there's a little bit of translucency over here. Okay, so I, I really recommend you not do this anymore. I recommend you think about your lighting environment before you prioritize the face. Thumbnail do some thumbnails um, before you before you do all of this stuff. So uh, I can't. I guess I lose the lasso when I paste. So it's okay. So before, after, and if you feel like this is all too light, it's not dark enough. You can you can darken him uh, even further. I don't know if my lasso is going to behave. I, I'm not doing this lasso again. Um, so we can darken him even further. So we can get a multiply layer. Um, actually, this might work as multiply or darken. No. No, that's nighttime. Darken. No. No. Um, I'm just going to have to do it manually, or womanually. Okay, so, multiply, new value, check where my dark is dark is, adjust, greenify, and coolify, and then we just throw a little bit more. The farthest leg gets to be a little bit lighter, it's more drowned, and then I'm just going to erase. Bear with me. The last critique, anyway. And I want to make sure I get everyone because I canceled twice already on you guys, and I don't like doing that. I don't know why my computer's humming. Oh, it's because I allocated, like, a bunch of RAM to, 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 what's it called? I'm sorry. <laughs> Chill out. Okay. I'll, uh, cancel. I'll, uh fix that after. Sorry, that's why my computer is humming. It's, it wasn't Porsche Studio earlier. It was <laughs> this is because I was working on my pizzas these last weeks and I uh, I didn't want to be lagged. My One of my smudge brushes is a real ram hog. And then one of the legs is lighter. And I'm just going to adjust slightly. And then, ooh la la, we're going to do a little bit of this. Wherever this light source is coming from, there is a source for it. And that source is a 
I don't know, a glow, a magic lamp, the sun. But wherever it is, is you've made it, as the writer, you made it directly behind him. We can't let it, we can't let dodge tool, greedy dodge tool, leak over everything. So we got to erase. But there will be some areas that bloom right over top his muscles, his hair. And again, look at the narrative. It became so much more intense. Just because we stopped showing the character. Isn't this, doesn't that piss you off? <laughs> you have to do less to show more skill. That's the irony, really. Were these trees really so important they had to be black? Were they? No. I have to restart Photoshop for the RAM thing to get take effect, but whenever I use a lot of the of one brush, you can hear the humming. Okay, so before, after. The story is so much more, uh, just, you know, it draws you in. It really does. It merely pulls you in. And this is just a minor little light behind him. It isn't universal. It isn't a sun. I wouldn't call it a sun. So you can still darken the top half. Some of these trees will be in an in in extended silhouette eventually. So they will get some of the darkness back. But they need it. But this is only because they're like drowned directly in the light. They get some silhouette. Of course they are in silhouette, but up here they get to be a little bit darker again. Things just darken back up. And that's because it's not a sun. If it wasn't a sun, if it was a sun, image, image size. If it was a sun, then everything would be silhouetted. Okay, and then again, just like I did before, this green is a little bit cheap. It's a cheap green. It's a dollar dollar store green. Get a little bit more blue. Have some have some courage. And if it's the, and if the well or whatever he's coming out of, I don't really know this like patch of trees that is good for summoning demons up. If that's where the light is coming from, then we have an opportunity to create some flame-like glow coming from beneath. So just around him, maybe there can be a fog that's slightly catching some of that. You know, just floating in front and drowning around like a cauldron. Something really, really cool. But everything starts with the main story, and the main story is about a guy walk come summoned back to life with tree power and has eerily walked back into the living world i don't I, if i were staging this i wouldn't shine a spotlight on him i'd scare the crap out of the audience by not showing so much of him even protagonist i think back to any anime you've ever watched even a protagonist that is introduced as a mystery is is, is introduced as a bad guy Think about it. N name the movie. Name the movie where a guy makes a comeback and he's a good guy. He's reintroduced as a bad guy just to scare the audience. And you do that by creating a shadow over the character so the character, so you can't recognize them. And in that, you scare the audience. Um, and that's how you tell stories. At the end of the day, you're all writers and storytellers. You're all here because you want to tell a story. That's why you started drawing. Um, don't say you started drawing because you didn't have a TV and you wanted to entertain it. What? That shit, that's a good, that's a good excuse. There's really, it always has to do with something that you have to entertain yourself with. It always, has to, you have to write stories. You're telling stories. Um, no one starts drawing just because they want to, you know, get better than somebody else at drawing just because. It always has to do with telling a story. Um, I think I got one, but I don't want to spoil anything. Um... Uh, I, w I really was an overprotective parent with all the character details. Yeah, you were. And this is all we need. You're telling the story. If you wanted to detail him more, feel free to drop in value as low as you want. You can use something like this. But remember what I said early? It all ties back together. The neighboring values, the neighborhood values cannot share information. The darkest of this cannot be the darkest. The lightest of this cannot be the darkest. This still has to be darker. Um, so it, you, to, before you had overlap. So if you, if you felt like he needs more detail, feel free. If he has black hair, it'll be even more black. It'll be pitch black in a dim scene like this. So go ahead and give him black hair. He's got a big old beard. I recommend, because you know me, make his eye glow a little bit. That would be hella cool. 
I love glowy eyes. Make him look up as if to, uh, you know, show the direction of his intentions or his target or whatever. You can mess around like that if he's just been reincarnated. You can mess around like that. If he has a black shirt, if he's got a black belt, if he's got a big old black pepperoni nipples, you can go ahead and do that. But just as long as your narrative is reflected by your characterization, which is great here. He's brooding. His head is lower than his shoulder line. Excellent. All great points. Again, you guys draw so well if I take out the lighting factor. You guys draw good is basically the thing. But as soon as you started painting, you threw everything off because you don't know how to paint a room. And uh, as soon as we, you know, fix the room, then everything goes back up a level. So for those people who ask the question, my drawings always look better than my painting, it's because painting requires for you to choose a light source. And a light source um, changes everything. It decides the time of day, or the time of day decides the light source. The storytelling, the narrative, the mood, um, the staging, the, 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 everything is decided by the how you, what you do with the light. And that's a language you don't know, which is why your drawing isn't the same level as your painting. And that's it for today. Lots of stuff. So I talked a bit about Portrait Studio updates coming up. We're throwing out little tiny updates here and there. Um, please stop trying to run Portrait Studio on potatoes. Uh, make sure you read performance requirements or system requirements before you download or buy it. Uh, Portrait Studio is available on my website. If you guys want to join the community, you want to get yourself critiqued, you just got to go to istabrak.com. Click on the little Google Plus icon over here. Uh, read the rules, join, and um, that's it. One tiny little announcement. I don't know who's joining. I don't know who's doing it, but there is an environment design currently up, a design challenge currently up for the Halloween season, I mean, for the Christmas season, and it's a busy holiday town, uh, Christmas town. It's got a couple rules you got to follow, but it's a, it's, real cool. it's a landscape environment um, challenge and you're painting a busy little Christmas town preferably at night so you can show all the values and you can show all the glowing lights and stuff like that um, make sure you read the rules before you join try out some thumbnails just mess around if, if you're not going to post anything try it some try your hand at some thumbnails it'll definitely uh, link back to everything we studied today which is learning how to paint a room learning how to create an environment um, and I think that's it. I'm so sorry if I'm not taking any more questions. Um, uh, thank you everyone for joining today. I will see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great day, guys. Bye.